biggest reaction that a pharmacist should be aware of when uh, dealing with monoamine oxidants? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I would say that the person has to have a diet monitored very closely. Um, and, you know, because there's so many, this is a common enzyme and it's located in many areas of the body. So, you know, it might be effective in one area of the body, but then in another area of the body, such as, you know, heart rate, heart pressure, things like that, it could cause problems if it interacts and there's over, you know, expressed levels of it or under expressed levels of it. And it can throw the whole body into an imbalance and cause, you know, tragic life threatening reactions. As to the specific path, I can get back to more. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think I mentioned prior to the slides that um, vitamins are used to treat uh, depression. Uh, in your research, did you come across any specific vitamins per se, and is it used to treat depression itself, or just like caffeine issue related to anxiety? I don't know of any vitamin off the top of my head that is specifically used to cure depression. However, I know that vitamins when they're in balance. For example, let's say vitamin C, uh, you have low vitamin C levels and you develop scurvy and your teeth are falling out. Just common sense wise, you know, that's a reason to cause depression when you're feeling weak, when your body doesn't have energy, when it's sick. These are all, you know, items that have been known to cause depression. There are no further questions. Person uh, who is, uh, not depressed or is the normal uh, levels of those uh, uh, neurochemicals in their brain where to take uh, any type of uh, antidepressant medication. What would typically happen? Do you feel more happy or what would be expected? Well, that's a very dangerous thing to do because you yourself don't know, you know how your body reacts. So for example, if you would were to take an SSRI or something that increases serotonin, it might cause serotonin syndrome. Doesn't you know? You don't know the dose. You haven't been evaluated by a professional. You haven't spoken to a pharmacist about dosages. Bottom line, you don't know what's in that pill that you're taking too. So those could be a thousandfold. You could develop serotonin syndrome, and you know, increased heart rate, you know, palpitations, uh, psychosis, and you could end up dying if you're not you know taking hospital immediately. Same as dopamine, norepinephrine, you know, if, if any of these drugs that you take, you know, happen to affect you in that kind of a way, it could lead to serious problems. Um, you know, that being said, for the average person, you know, if you weigh like 150 pounds and, and, and you take like a low, you know, like 50 milligrams of Bluebox, for example, which is the starting dose, most likely nothing's gonna happen. Um, you know, you might experience some dilated pupils, you might experience drowsiness, but you know, especially for SSRIs, it takes six to eight weeks for them to even have a pronounced effect. So, you know, if you're trying to take them to get high, I, you know, I don't think that, that's a good thing to do. And, you know, trying to take drugs to get high in the first place is not a good thing to do. So, Are there any notable interactions between all the drugs that you've presented so far? Well, so for example, if you combine an SSRI with something like uh, mirtazapine, you know, you could have an elevated level of serotonin which, like I've been saying, cause serotonin syndrome. You know, if you combine multiple um, benzodiazepines together, that can lead to a problem because you might actually decrease your heart rate and, you know, combine clonazepam, Xanax, other, you know, benzodiazepines together, and they interact, it could cause really low heart rate, and it can cause you to die, you know. So, that's, that's bad. Yes. 
patient comes into your pharmacy and is complaining that the drug's not working after a week, what would you normally tell them? If the, I would first consult with them you know, as to what medication they're taking to make sure I know when it is and when it isn't supposed to be acting. Um, and I would tell them, you know, what did your doctor tell you? Um, because based on the information here, this is what I think about the subject. And um, I would tell them to continue the regimen and if it is like a long acting medicine, like an SSRI, then definitely, you know, it could take up to six months in some papers I've read to act. So, you know, you always want to reassure the patient, you always want to reassure the customer that, you know, these aren't just wonder pills. You know, they go into your body and your brain has to react and things have to change, the metabolism has to shift or there's some kind of effect. It's not something that you just boom take and I'm cured. It takes a while, especially with depression, to get treated. Well, yes. Tell me a bit about how you would diagnose someone for depression. Like, how would you be able to tell the difference between, say, a patient who has depression versus a patient who has bipolar disorder? Well, depression is a very broad term. Uh, I believe bipolar disorder is one of the kind of clinical outcomes of depression. But, you know, a bipolar person would have very mood swings, you know. They would present themselves as manic, you know, being able to jump out of a window, which is actually one of the biggest dangers in bipolar disorders, you think you can do anything. Um, or they would have extreme, extreme lows. So if their mood was, you know, kind of irritable, angry, you know, I want this now, or, oh my God, I'm gonna kill myself. At the same time, that's more of a bipolar disorder versus depression is more like, you know, I'm not really sure, I'm down. You know, it's kind of a more stable sadness. Of, you know, to use a simple term. On a bipolar disorder, if you're in a man phase, has to be at least two weeks before it's considered bipolar. You have to be a man for two weeks and then drop for two weeks. Is that what you're doing? Right. I'm just so saying. So it's not just up or down in the same day. It's right. Mania for two weeks before it's going to get my whole Right. I, I was just answering the question in terms of if someone walked up to the counter, depending on how they were acting. You know, if they were being over aggressive, you know, angry, irritable. Yeah, yeah. it's not going like, to jump right away. You know, no. you're not going to go. And you can't make a diagnosis, you know, within me and the person in three minutes. Yes. Uh, in uh, select young groups of patients, uh, what do you need to warn them about when they start taking one of these antidepressants for the first time? So especially with teenagers um, and adolescents up to even 22 years of age, the, um, one of the biggest worries is that when you initiate antidepressant therapy, um, you develop thoughts of suicide. And the reason behind that is that you are so depressed that when you actually begin an antidepressant, um, you actually gain more energy. So if you were having suicidal thoughts, but you're so depressed as to not act upon them, um, you know, literally, I don't have enough energy to kill myself, you all of a sudden have that ability and then you start maybe thinking about doing it and that, that's been one of the rationales for this syndrome. Um, but it's definitely a concern, and you, people definitely have to be monitored when they initiate antidepressant therapy because a lot of people falsely think, I'm gonna take a pill and it's gonna make me happy, when in, in truth, that's not the case. And it takes a while for your body to establish itself into its new equilibrium. No further questions, thank you very much.